This is Lee with Crash Test Hobby showing you how to build the aileron wing for the Albatross. The Albatross is a great flying FPV plane. Also works well as a great aileron trainer. Start by folding the aileron back over the wing and flexing the wing to relax the hinge line so that it moves freely. Notice how strong the EPP foam and hinge line are. Use a sharp razor blade and trim the foam slot for the wood brace so that your spars will glue directly to the wood brace in the center. After you've got it trimmed, put the wood brace in and check your alignment. Make sure everything fits before you glue. Then remove the brace, put some baking soda in the slot to help the CA glue cure. Baking soda is a catalyst for CA glue. Then glue the wing panels together. You don't need to glue the ailerons, just the forward panels. The glue sets quickly when you use hot glue. And then take the wood brace and press it into the slot. It should be quite tight. Once it's properly positioned, make sure the wing angle is correct and then use CA glue to glue the wood into the EPP foam wing. Make sure you glue both front and back, top and bottom. We put a wire at the center section of the wing to help reinforce where the spars from the right wing and the left wing come together. I slightly deepen the slot along here so that the wire doesn't push the spars up and then press it into place. Using my low temperature hot glue gun I then put glue down one side of the wing and press the spar into place. It, the wire that we previously bent is underneath and I make sure that the spar and the wood brace are securely glued together. Now doing the other side of the top. Once again press the spar into place. You want it below the surface level of the wing in the pre-cut slot in the wing. Afterwards, I take and put a small bead of glue down the top and flatten it out so it has better contact with the wing, also less airflow disruption. And then I glue, reinforce the joint between the two wing panels. And I do this on both sides of the wing. Let's now do the bottom of the wing. We're going to put the wire in. I've never had a wing break in the middle using this method. Press the wire down under the surface, put glue down the spar slot. The top and bottom spars create an I-beam that is stronger than the spars would be alone. Incredibly strong. And then we'll do the other side. Just don't burn your fingers. I always burn my fingers. Then use some wire cutters and just trim the sparse to length. And once again, I put a small bead of glue down the top of the spar and just flatten it out so that I have good airflow and a good bond with the spar and the wing. We're now going to trim where the rubber bands will go over the back of the wing. We're just going to take the ailerons off that back part of the wing and the rubber bands will go between the ailerons to connect to the fuselage. This has several advantages, one of which is it leaves a thick part to the back of the wing where it's much stronger than it would be if we were using the thin trailing edge of the wing. Another advantage is it blends in well where the ailerons don't have to work against other surfaces that are fixed, so it leaves them open and free. 
We're now going to put a nylon wing guard in place to protect the wing from the rubber band so the rubber band can't tear through the foam. We're going to do this both on the back and the front, as you can see, and on the top and the bottom of the wing. We probably are overbuilding and doing this, but uh, the wings are just so durable when built this way that we've decided it's worth doing it on every plane we build. We use hot glue which sticks well both to the nylon and to the foam and it holds very well. In fact it's hard to get them off if you want to get them off. Now while I was trimming the trailing edge I accidentally cut into the aileron and so I'm going to use some goop and show you how to repair it later if you ever have it tear in later use. Work some goop into it. You don't want so much it will restrict the movement but put glue on the top and then fold it back and put some glue underneath. You can trim the corners of the ailerons to give better access for the rubber bands. It also looks better. Has nothing really to do with flight, but it does give you better access. We're now going to install the servos. You want the servos as far towards the center panels of the wing as you can get them, depending upon the length of your servo wires. I use a soldering iron and a jig to cut out a pattern for my servos, but I frequently just use an X-Acto knife and uh, some measurements I have tr done when I trace the servos. You want to make sure you don't cut through the wing. By having a servo on each wing too, you can do other things with the wing. You could even you'd make flapperons or, and ailerons or even use it as a flying wing uh, with uh, elevons uh, if you ever set up a that such a configuration. Now you can also lay your servos flat or you can stand them up uh, if the servo isn't too tall. I have done both. You may see some of one of the other wings that we were building where the servos are standing later in this video. I think that laying them flat is probably a preferred method so that's what I'm focusing on on this video. We glue the servos in place with hot glue uh, which makes them very secure and keeps them from moving. We're now going to install the push rods. As you notice they magically appeared. You have to mark where the horns are going to be. I align the servo uh, arms up with the back of the ailerons and just draw a line straight back. Punch a hole with a soldering iron and that hole is so glue can flow up around the horn. Then I take a X-Acto knife and cut a cut through the glue hole. We will then push the horns up through. You want the front of the horn even with the uh, gap between the uh, ailerons and the wing and then Taking the glue gun, I force glue down through that glue hole we made and then reposition and even put some glue from the other side. Very quick and it holds quite well. Just force that glue down around the horn and then uh, touch it up on the other side. The holes are too small for the easy connectors on the horn, so drill out the top horn on, the hole only on the horn, and then slide the gold body of the easy connector up and poke it through the top hole on the horn. Then put the plastic snap on. I found that if I put the snap on upside down, it goes on easier. And then put the securing screw in. Let's do the other side. Put the snap on, press it in place, put the screw in. And then take a pair of wire cutters and cut the rods to length. I'm now going to bury the servo wires. Make sure as you do this you don't cut the servo wires. And I put a slit that's about 3 8 inch deep from the servo to the center of the plane where you just noticed I used a soldering iron and made a small hole where I'm going to bring the wires out. I actually put a little glue in there so that there isn't pressure on those wires to be pulled out of the wing. I don't glue the wires the length of the wing. The 
grip of the foam is enough to keep that wire in place. Then I glue the servos in place and I go around three sides of the servo, make sure it has a good grip. I don't want them falling out or moving. Make sure they're flat with the wing. Now notice on this fuselage I have two rear dowels. That's because I use several wings on this fuselage and one fits one wing and one fits the other two wings. So uh, you can add dowels back there however you want. Then Tighten the adjustment screws on the bottom of the aileron so it's flat with the back of the wing. You, want, you can tell from the edge where that aileron is properly positioned. Just make sure that, as you, that you get them properly positioned or your wing will uh, not track properly. Then make sure your servos are properly positioned so that when you push the stick to the right, the right aileron comes up. To add color to the plane, I like to use the Fusion paint for plastics, and you can do some magnificent paint jobs with just rattle cam paint. Thank you for buying and building our planes. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. This is Lee with Crash Test Hobby.